Welcome to Electron Line. Have you ever wondered how it is even possible for a single satellite to go in orbit around a planet and be able to measure and discover so many different things? The answer is the instrumentation and the techniques that they use is absolutely amazing. So what was the equipment? What was the scientific payload that was on the spacecraft, the messenger, to allow us to learn so much about the planet Mercury? Well, there were basically eight different systems and we're going to address those. We're going to take the first four and then we'll do the, the next four in the next video. But on this uh, video here, the first four, we're going to talk about the MDIS, the GRS, the NS and the XRS. What in the world are those things? Well, those are acronyms for scientific instruments. The first one, MDIS, is, is an acronym for Mercury Dual Imaging System, just a fancy name for cameras, visual cameras. Of course, to us, the most interesting part is to see pictures of what it actually looks like. And so in order to do that, they had two Pivot Mountain CCD cameras. And of course, that's not spelled correctly here. That should be an A. Cameras, there we go. And uh, one of them was a narrow angle camera. The other one was a wide angle camera. Typically, the wide angle camera has a little bit less resolution, but it takes a larger area picture. They typically do that to get a global survey of what the entire planet looks like and then they measure the pictures together so they use the wide angle camera for that and then when they're interested in getting more detail about a specific area of interest then they zoom in with the narrow angle camera they get a higher resolution there but over much narrower range so it turns out the resolution that they can get on the surface map for the global surveying of the planet, it's about 250 meters per pixel. That's four pixels per kilometer. That is absolutely astounding to have that kind of resolution. And then in addition to that, if they want to zero, zero in and zoom into a specific area of interest, they can then use the narrow angle camera and get a, um, a resolution that varies from 20 to 50 meters per pixel, depends upon a little bit of the angle of approach and so forth. But notice they can get tremendous resolution. So here we're talking about anywhere from 20 to 50 pixels per kilometer. That is a lot of detail. And we're talking about one direction. So then if you take a square kilometer, let's just even say at 50 meters per pixel, that's 20 pixels in one direction, 20 in the other, that is 400 pixels for a square kilometer. That gives you a tremendous detail. And of course, the greater the detail, the greater the resolution, the better we're able to figure out what's happening geologically and structurally on the surface of the planet. The second piece of equipment, which is an amazing piece of equipment, is called the GRS or the gamma ray spectrometer. In other words, it's able to detect gamma rays coming from the surface. Now you may say, well, how in the world can you get gamma rays from a surface? Well, there's two different reasons why it does. The first reason is, and it's because Mercury has virtually no atmosphere, we can then say that the cosmic rays coming in from space almost get to the surface unhindered by the very, very thin atmosphere. And therefore, when they impact on the surface, they will then agitate the atoms in the soil in the top layer of the, of the surface of the planet, and then will cause the atoms to vibrate. And then those vibrations can send off gamma rays back into space, which are then detected by the spectrometer. And depending upon what element it came from, it'll have different frequencies which can be detected. And those different frequencies then indicate what element may be in the soil or in the top portion of the surface. And so we're looking for things such as oxygen, sulfur, silicon, iron, and hydrogen, as well as potassium in the surface uh, portion of the, um, of the soil. And I shouldn't really call it soil because it's just, you know, dead, uh, dead surface material. But nevertheless, using the spectrometer, they're able to detect what, which of those elements are there and by and how much abundance of those elements. In addition to that, there are radioactive elements such as thorium, thorium and uranium, which send off gam gamma rays on their own during the natural decay process. And again, those frequencies of those gamma rays can be detected, the abundance as well as the particular frequency, again, telling us what is there in the surface. Now it turns out that the gamma rays detected, the emissions tend to come from a region about 10 centimeters, which is about four inches thick on the top layer of the surface, which is quite amazing. Now, of course, if it's covered by the material, we can't see what's underneath it. But in general, by surveying the entire surface of the planet, we can get a pretty good idea of what kind of minerals and what kind of elements exist in the top layer of the surface of the planet. 
The third instrument is called a neutron spectrometer. So this one can detect neutrons. Now again, you might say, well, why would neutrons be expelled from the surface of the planet? Well, for a number of reasons. One of them, again, is that if we have cosmic rays impacting on the surface material, it could actually send off neutrons back into space. Uh, neutrons are sent in all directions. Neutrons will go sideways and impact into other elements that are there. And then those will then cause neutrons to, to go off into space. And depending upon what kind of material the gamma rays impact and the other neutrons impact, the neutrons will lose some of their energy through that impact. And depending upon what kind of elements they run into, especially if they're hydrogen rich, the neutrons will lose a greater percentage of their energy. And therefore, when we detect low energy neutrons versus high energy neutrons, it's a very strong indicator that there is hydrogen there. Typically, hydrogen is part of water or ice or hydrogen as part of other minerals. And so that can be done to a depth of 40 centimeters. So if there's any subsurface water or any subsurface ice mixed in with the soil or mixed in with the dirt or mixed in with carbonaceous material, then if it's not too deep, we can actually detect it. And in that way, we've detected that there's an enormous amount of ice near the North Pole and the South Pole of Mercury. We'll talk about in more detail as well. The fourth instrument we have is what we call the X-ray spectrometer. And again, you wouldn't expect X-rays to be emanating from the surface because usually X-rays are associated with very high energies. We're looking for X-rays in the, in the area of 1 to 10 kilo electron volts. But again, uh, we can do that because of the interaction between all the energy imparting on the surface, the solar radiation, the UV, high energy UV. We have the um, what we call the... Um, cosmic rays impacting, and because of that, there's potential for energy buildup within the atoms at the X-ray level of energy, and then when they re-emit that energy, they will do so at very specific frequencies, just like light is emitted at very specific frequencies from um, an agitated molecule where the electrons, for example, have been lifted up to higher energies. But here it's the atoms themselves that contain the energy, they will emit X-rays, in the range of 1 to 10 kilo electron volts and those particular x-ray frequencies are related to magnesium, aluminum, sulfur, calcium, titanium and iron. Again, we can detect what's there on the surface based upon the x-ray emissions from those elements. Now notice in this case, this method is only good for the top one millimeter, which is 1 25th of an inch. So it's a very thin layer, basically the very top layer of the surface. But again, if those x-rays are there, we can detect them. And the x-rays detection then will be associated with specific type of elements found at the surface. So imagine that one single satellite can circumnavigate the planet multiple times, sending out or looking for these emissions of neutrons, emissions of gamma rays, emissions of x-rays, as well as taking visual pictures. And from that, we can get an enormous quantity of information as to what's actually on the surface of the planet, what the surface is made out of, how the different elements are distributed across the surface. It's quite amazing how much we can learn just from these four instruments alone. And stay tuned because in the next video, we'll have some additional instruments, part of the payload that can do additional uh, investigation of what we're going to find on Mercury. So stay tuned and we'll see what those are.